Oh, live stream, got it. Yay, it's working. <laughs> Vinaka Vakalevo, and the same mind in Bula Nimbula Vinaka, Dola Dolavina, Nimbula Nakwa, Dolan Ravi, Malo and Bula, Vinaka Vinaka Vakalev Star and Nanomali Sema Mai and Kavinaganikua. Kervi was at Chicoyani, and Nanoa Krosa Sanga and Boka Viocani, Mikrosema and Ivatavatango, Gay Dona Kaitao and Mona Livoliva. Ia ni kuwa sanga itandola rawa, sanga rawa ike rawa mikrona mei vitala noyani, ena kabina ka ni kuwa, ena kena baka na numitu kwa ndona sinango na nana chiko baka peritani ena International Day Against Illicit Trafficking in Cultural Property. Ano wili katala ina baka rua, International Day Against Illicit Trafficking in Cultural Property. Ngo ndo baka na numitu kwa ena vei tin kabani sina todo kwa ni vula novemba. Erto didi baka tiku na sinango na songo songo ngo na UNESCO. Na UNESCO, endo tako na mati nitu ni burubura, sorry, na songo songo ni burubura, erlewe ya nabi mati nitu burubura, kadana tiku baka peritania na United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. Ya na UNESCO. Tiku na kena boli bolo bolo liu, ni UNESCO esa amo. Engarapa tiku na wasa pasipika. Sangka itu ira na bi tambah na lalai, en na bi mati itu na bi was pasifika. Dua tali juga nak kena boleh boleh boleh. Tiku tali na ipit, er tu tinggi malu tiku ber tu na tambah tak tak ni bul. Ia, na sikit ni kuat dah marau. Ni mai cukup tak kikian di dalam marau mango. Bukan bikin dah sakit lekoi. Andi meretui tuwau ratu nombombua. 
kwa marama ni nandi o chungu na ngai kire kwa me na ngai baka madalti kwa bika bikaenda na bunifu na bato mikina baka telenga kina na nona buli kena nona zaka zaka me randa rani kila se zaba na buli kero me bita nchi kini kwa kena marama ngo o andi meritu tuwa urato na bumbwa zola bina tau welcome to the platform tau zola bina tau to be here finally <laughs> zoom is working <laughs> i think the the people in hawaii the spirits didn't want me to come yesterday <laughs> but we need to welcome welcome thank you thank you, thank you for inviting me yeah yeah it's a town no just want to thank you so much for taking the time away from your own schedule that you have and uh, just to come and tell and know with us especially about mm -hmm. this uh, um, you know special day that we celebrate around the world the um, international day against illicit trafficking uh, in cultural property which is uh, celebrated around the world on the 14th of um, November uh, it was my Sunday uh to yesterday because it's monday here so i thought it was a good day to talano yesterday as you know the zoom didn't work uh but i'm so the glad to be back today <laughs> yes <laughs> so would you like to just uh, say a little bit about yourself now in a way from originally where you were uh, raised um mm -hmm. and your family background and also after mm -hmm. that then you can share uh, what kind of training you you had uh, that is why you are sitting right here. There's a purpose why you're here <laughs> to talk about this very special day. Oh, Naka oh, town. Naka. Naka, my town. Um, and thank you. Thank you um, to all those who have joined us on um, the Facebook, uh, on the uh, Facebook and Zoom platform. We tried yesterday, but we're here today. And then just to tell you that um, my name is Meritui. I'm Tubo Ratunambombo. I'm Divyalangi. I got married um, just recently in 2018. I'm from Vunamoli in Nandi. So I'm from up in the mountains. So when you come into Nandi airport, we are up in the mountains. So we are what, what are, uh, uh, called the Chungwangwa, the elders in Nandi. So we're one of the oldest tribes. In fact, my grandfather was the Buli Ruku Ruku, and he was like the one talk for um, Nasese, Nasesebia. So he was a Tui Nasesebia. And then um, my dad uh, was one of the sons um, who, who got away. <laughs> he joined the British army. So in, in fact, it's 60 years. This this uh, this week is the anniversary of 60 years since the um, 212 Fijians joined the British Army. The first uh, lot who were recruited during the, the times of the colonies. So um, my dad went over, and uh, I'm one of the eldest of all of the um, children who, who were raised in the uh, UK. So I was six months old when I left. I had a, a photo that I was going to share, but. Um, I was six months old when I left Fiji and uh, grew up in um, uh, England, uh, went to Hong Kong, uh, then England and Germany. And uh, after 22 years, I came back. Um, I had a background in uh, the visual arts and graphic design. And uh, you know, I, I came back, I was just uh, wanting to see what Fiji was like. I didn't know who my relatives were. I needed to reconnect at 22 and finish my um, art um, uh, um, education. Um, from Germany then to UK and uh, from there I, I, I uh, taught at the Fiji Institute of Techno Technology, um, the then Fiji Institute of Technology in graphic design and started up a, a school of arts, culture and design and then government saw what I was doing they said hey why don't you come over to you know help us start up this ministry of culture and I was like no 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 it's okay I like I like working with you so I'll just stay here and they said no please come over so I went over they headhunted me <laughs> And then um, I went over and uh, got involved in all sorts of conventions, the World Heritage Convention, the Intangible Cultural Heritage Convention. So with, with the, many of the arts, I mean, the departments of heritage um, that we have in the Pacific, there are many conventions. So we'll, we'll talk a bit about that today. But the one we're looking at today is on uh, the fight against the um, illicit trafficking on cultural property. Um, which thank you yesterday, though I wasn't able to jo join you, actually gave a good background for everybody to, <laughs> to uh, be introduced to, to, to what it means, what, what this whole um, issue on uh, illicit trafficking for cultural property was about. So, um, yeah, I, I uh, joined government and um, retired as a civil servant in 2017. 
uh, got married to my husband, who's uh, here in, in Nandi with us, of course, <laughs> uh, on the farm, and uh, stood for the elections for a bit, and then um, uh, came back and uh, uh, have been doing work for the region with um, uh, the Blue Shield Pacifica. We're looking at uh, the, another convention, the Hague Convention, for the protection of um, uh, cultural property in times of uh, uh, conflict, for, uh, and also for uh, when there's man, uh, human-made and uh, uh, natural disasters, uh, how we protect our, um, our cultural property. So um, that's in, in, a, in a nutshell where we are. So a lot of the work I, I do is either consultancies or, 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 or um, uh, 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 voluntary. Uh, we had a, a big uh, uh, consultancy with the, the churches, the Pacific Cult, uh, Council of Churches, um, reweaving the ecological map. So looking at the way, um, <laughs> because we've, got, we've had this pandemic, it's just uh, timely that, you know, we need to go back to our, uh, Basics, back to the basics, plant, fishing, and, and, and the, uh, revive the traditional knowledge and skills that, uh, you know, in the past may have disappeared because we're so you know, busy relying on uh, uh, processed food that we purchase. So go and back to the land and, uh, and to do that again. Huh? So, yeah, that's, that's, I guess, in a nutshell where we're at. I have one daughter and uh, my husband and I, we have uh, between us, um, I think we've got nine n uh, nine grandchildren. So he has his children, and we combined. We're all all um, quite a big family, but uh, we're here in Nandi, in the water level. Naka, naka wakalevo tau for sharing a little bit about yourself, because I think many of us we kind of get to know you as you started doing a lot of this amazing work for Fiji uh, and also for. Um, uh, yeah, not only just for Fiji, but uh, you know the region, and even as you mentioned in Asia as well. Sometimes you have the Asia Pacific region, you know, joined together. Um, but I was just curious: have you always been um, involved in the arts when you were little, uh, when you were a young girl? What was like your dream job? Did you have a a, a job <laughs> that you always wanted to to, to do? When I'll you tell you what I wanted to do. I wanted to marry. The, the man who was on the sweet, they used to have the sweet chop that used to come around and I said, oh, yeah. my mom said, you either marry a, a baker or a, <laughs> a sweet, sweet guy. So, you know, that was one of my aspirations to get on. <laughs> oh, I can then eat all of the lollies, but uh, it didn't happen. So, uh, yeah, I was uh, always very, uh, um, I was very sporty. So I, I, most of the time I traveled all around Europe um, wow. playing netball and hockey and uh, was, you know, was the captain of everything. This time, yeah, the whether I liked it or not, they'd say, you will be the captain. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, uh, so your your leadership skills were seen at a very young yeah. age then, eh? Yeah, mm. yeah. I always uh, um, had the leadership skills. And, uh, mm. um, so that was in the sports. And I had a choice between being an artist, um, an athlete, or an actress. And, and so I thought, between the three, actress, well, you know, you don't know when you're going to get a job. And then um, with the athletics, well, you have to be fit and that. I still do a lot of Zoom, Zoom um, exercise with my church group and everything. But I, th I thought, I'll go for the arts. So I, mm -hmm. I, I chose a career in arts and um, uh, 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 graduated in, in Southampton in England, uh, did a course, and then I came back to Fiji and nobody else had that qualification and uh, or had that background. So I came in at the right time when people were needing to go for um, education and training, capacity building. And then I stepped in as a volunteer and then they used to give me the timetables and say, yes, let me know. Oh, let me do that. It's like, they say, why do you want to do this when it's not your job and you're supposed to? And then they say, it's like a game, you know, it's like a, um, you take the challenge, you know, and it's like creative thinking. Uh, um, and it, I don't know if you know Edward de Bono, um, uh, what was it? The, yeah, he, it's, um, yeah, creative thinking, um, doing thing, lateral thinking, I'm sorry, lateral thinking. So doing, instead of digging a hole deeper, you look for, you know, ways to, to do things in another way. And so I've always sort of carried that. That was a good training that I had in, in the UK on lateral thinking. Instead of mm -hmm. looking at a problem in the same way, try and find other ways to, and I think you know, Tao, from our work with Pima, instead of, you know, everybody says, you can't do this, you can't do this. We find a way around it to, to make it happen. Absolutely. And maybe sometimes it's not the the the, 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 the sort of formal way, but other ways to, to get inroads mm -hmm. to make it I really like that, you know, when you uh, you create that opportunity just to, to problem solve. Yeah? Yes. So you look at a problem, but you don't dwell on it, but find yes. the solution. Yes, yeah. Mm. And the creative way to, to get to the solution. Right. 
Sometimes yeah. it's not the the not the 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 lateral, you know, the way that you just go normally. You have to find ways and be yeah. creative. Absolutely, yeah. I've seen that. I've really enjoyed working with you, Tao. You know, uh, every time we do work together, you know, I always feel that there's something that's going to be achieved. You know, you know, one way or another, funding or no funding. Yeah, um, we'll do it. <laughs> you know, support or no support, we'll still do it. You know, I really Find like that. Yeah, yeah, I really like that spirit because I think that can be the message we'll share to everybody today. Yeah? That yeah. whatever situation you are in, don't look at something that will does that may not yeah. work. Brooke. Find yeah. out Brooke's. a way that will work. Yes, yes. Wow. You remember the big, the big EU funding? They were saying, "Oh no, it's too difficult to do the proposal, and there's a lot of bureaucratic bureaucratic barriers and this." And we we were like. Oh no, let's just try. We'll just try. We'll do it. And we got it. So, <laughs> so you know, remember that one for, for the Caribbean and the exchanges, yes. you know? That one yes. they said no. Everybody was saying, hey, it's too difficult. You can't do it. It's all this signing up. But we managed to do it. So, yes. and it's, yeah, it's like having that, you have the block and getting over the block. Huh? So, mind yes. over matter. Yeah, yeah. Mind over matter. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. And I was really fortunate eh, to be one of those, uh, um, uh, the researcher that went over to the Caribbean. So yeah. I have the opportunity now to connect with those in the Caribbean, in Trinidad, yes. and now we have they the don't... network with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. good, so good. We're not, we're not they they, they have side. similar issues to the, uh, the Caribbean has similar issues to the, to the Pacific. So we kind of benchmark off each other, mm. which is really good. That's right. And you mentioned about Pima. I know that your work from the ministry, you also went over to USP at the Pacific yes. Heritage Hub okay. and also yeah, at the same there. time with Pima. Well, what actually yeah. attracted you to be involved in the work for museums? Um, well, with the museums, I mean, like when I was in the Department of Heritage, we had the National Trust, the Fiji Museum and the Arts Council. So was on those boards mm -hmm. and then um, so with the the museum uh, I mean it's a, the, na the, na the national um, body that holds our you know treasures for for Fiji mm -hmm. and um, I think the same thing it was a, it was a, a, a solving a problem they had set up Pima uh, in New Caledonia and then it moved to Fiji and then it got stuck and then they said oh you know everyone lost hope they said no it's not happening what are, what, what are we going to do we, we can't do anything it's finished and so uh, I had the opportunity to meet with somebody who was uh, with Australian aid. And she said, we've got some technical assistance. So what kind? And she said, we can give volunteers who can help. I said, okay, can we have somebody that can help as a secretary general just to, so for communication to link all of the Pacific Island museums so that they, they can at least talk on email. And uh, at that time we only had email mm -hmm. and uh, just to, to make this thing happen again. And sure enough, we had the, um, uh, uh, who's Kim? No, not Kim. It was um, oh the other girl, uh, Meredith. Meredith Blake Meredith came in Blake. for for a while, and then for two years moved over from Fiji to Vanuatu, where the headquarters was, and then from um, Vanuatu, Kim, Dr. Kim Selling came, and after a while, um, it, so that was all based mm. on uh, assistance from the Australian government to get the mm. volunteers in who wanted experience and uh, you know and to make the pro the, the uh, alive again and then of course yes. we have you know we we got yourself in and uh, advertised the post and uh, so we have you know a pacific um, mm. person or face you mm. know heading uh, or as a secretary general and the same thing you, you also saw voluntary as well for a, a, a long time and it's really just connecting all the all of the um the, the dots uh, across the pacific and it, through through the email um through the internet because that's all we had at that time right? Uh, and we might we did some amazing things we we, we piggybacked off uh, whatever melon if there was a melanesian arts festival if there was a pacific arts festival we would have our meetings <laughs> board meetings during those times because the delegates would already be there and it would uh, it was the same cost we, we, because it was hard to get people to meet and uh, yeah we did a lot um, but uh, you know some but some of the issues are uh, you know are still there and, and again it, we just have to be creative on how we we go about it that is so true. We just want to acknowledge yeah, the work that you have contributed in the field of museums, and not only that, but also in the world of heritage uh, in general, you know, with all the organizations that you have been part of. Um, and I know you are doing some work for Blue Shield. Uh, yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, well, Blue Shield is, a, is, an, is another international um, uh, 
non-governmental organization of experts and um, the four main um, uh, partners uh, are ICOM which is the International Council of Museums, back to museums mm. again, uh, 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 IFLA, the, uh, the International Federation of Libraries, um, and also the uh, I, uh, uh, IFACA, the, the archives. Huh? So those are the four main um, bodies and uh, they, they ca they've come together and to look at illicit trafficking uh, like on um, uh, for for uh, um, for uh, objects in times of crisis huh? when, it, mm -hmm. when it's human induced and uh, um, uh, or it, when it's in uh, natural disaster. Huh? Mm -hmm. So uh, I've been the chair of that since 2016, um, mm -hmm. all voluntary and uh, a fantastic network. Uh, the, the headquarters is in, um, in the UK, Peter Stone is the chair in, in the UK and then we have reps from Geneva and uh, many countries are, uh, around the world and we meet often to, to talk about the issues and uh, training mm. for um, Blue Shield um, mm. uh, International. So we're in the process of setting up our, um, our website and, and our Secretary General is um, Elizabeth Edwards, um, who's uh, uh, Secretary General and she's uh, mm. like yourself with Pima, she had to join the job dots and keep talking to all of the, the partners and national governments and the NGOs of the region and then international. So, mm. but, but, but with the internet, you know, it's just, um, that's the, been the modem of us um, getting things done quickly. Yeah? But mm. now with this platform, boy, it, it, I, it, I, it's just changed everything. Things explode and you can actually get things done. So it's wonderful. Mm. Absolutely, so, and taking uh, this time to thank uh, yeah, Elizabeth Edwards, you know, she's done a lot of work on the ground, helping out with the Fiji Arts Council and uh, the Fiji Museum and the department. And it's really uh, amazing to see a lot of these uh, uh, women in particular. Yeah. I mean, also yeah. our male counterparts, uh, there yes. are many of them too on the side, yeah. uh, yeah. but it's really nice to see a lot of women like Susie Shaw, um, yes, and yes, Elizabeth yes. Edwards and Tuliana and Rova Kayawa and a really good uh, network of women in the mm. case of Fiji who are yeah. voluntarily most of the time giving their time and energy to make things work and make things happen and that what a wonderful example they are. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So like with Elizabeth, she's helping the art, the, the, the Fiji Arts Council and really strengthening them now. But you know, what while, while also doing Blue Shield and everything else. So, um, so even though it, as well, say when I was um, working as a, a civil servant, people will say to me, "You're a civil servant. How come you're working with Pima?" And I said, "Well, it, it's voluntary. We, somebody's got to, you know, support the museums and uh, um, and and its government officials plus NGOs working together. So it was a fantastic network that which I wouldn't have had that experience if I mm -hmm. um, uh, working with the museums and looking at uh, what they, they face uh, on a daily basis. Because huh? um, I mean, I, I did the same with the World Heritage Sites and uh, that's when I went to the USP for the Pacific Heritage Hub. Mm -hmm. uh, many governments sign up from ventures and uh, you know, there's a lack of resources or, or people capacity they move on, so it's, it's got to be continuous capacity building all of the time. Yes, and speaking of conventions, um, yes. let's talk about this special day, the 14th yes. of November, uh, which is yes. the International Day Against Illicit Trafficking in Cultural Property. And you were mentioning that uh, last year, no, 2020, 2020, they celebrated the 50 years um, anniversary of this convention. Tell us a little bit about this convention and why is the 50 year anniversary an important event for us? Well, 50 years is, oh, 50 years is a, a long time. Mm. And um, if we're looking at the context of Fiji, I, I think my, my knowledge uh, um, was that they, they first had awareness in, in 2000 in Nandi. Um, uh, they had an, uh, an ICOM, International Council of uh, Museums, mm -hmm. meeting in Fiji to talk about the, 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 the convention. And oh, just a minute, excuse me. Love, I'm on, on live. I'm on live. Uh, sorry. Uh, just telling people to. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so um, uh, yeah, we, we had the first meeting in two, 2000 in Fiji. And um, while they were at the meeting in Nandi, um, one of our objects from the, the Fiji Museum was stolen. Um, it, it, it left Fiji shores 
um, and that was the Wain, uh, Randini Waimaro a statue. And um, it went missing. And while they were in the workshop, they, they'd heard about this um, object and they said, uh, okay, um, it's gone missing. And, and they'd heard that it was, it, it traveled from Fiji, it was stolen, stolen property from the museum. Somebody had taken it out of the museum and it had traveled all the way to New Zealand. Uh, and uh, while it got to New Zealand, it was on, in transit to USA. And um, in this case, you know, they, they, they called the police and they called the customs controllers and they said, well, if you were going to find this object, you, you will have to, have you got a, a photo of it? Have you got the object identification? Is there anything that you can, you know, show us that will prove that, you know, what, 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 what exactly are we looking for? We need some kind of object ID. And they didn't have any, no photos, but they did have um, a sketch, an artist sketch which um, uh, described and, you know, had the, the background of the, the object and um, uh, uh, its significance. It was a, it's a treasure. It's a treasure for the people of Waimaro and um, uh, in uh, Naitasiri. And uh, it, it should have, I mean, it was taken from the people of Naitasiri for storage in the museum, but it went out of the country. So at this meeting, they said, okay, we've got, the, we've got a, um, a sketch uh, and we can go from there. So Interpol went out, you know, and, and did the search through all of the um, the, the police forces uh, around the you know the, the globe, and they managed to trace it in the uh, USA on its way to USA. It was just about to get on the plane, I think, <laughs> to to LA, and they managed to retrieve it. But you know, the, but it just shows you, you know, you, all of the partners that had to come in. You had the museums, the museum staff, the police, the customs, uh, customs control, um, and the, the, the fact that they needed to have an object identification so a database so all museums I mean they probably do have a database but it needs to be updated with that you know that object identification and the number and what it looks like so in the case that things do get stolen and, and they do because you know the, 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 what, what was reported in the 50th convention meeting was that sometimes um, people are taking objects out through poverty you know because they, they, they don't have you know they're un under resourced and they're, they're taking things out because there are not enough funds for their salaries or whatever and it's happened um uh, I, I mean i was at the museum too and, and some objects went under our even though we had the the you know the, the cameras and that they still managed to open the, the, the cases and, and get things out so um it, it, it is a problem you know and uh, and many museums uh, we need to sort of do some research on you know what the pro more i think you you have some of that research on on um some of the artifacts that have been stolen and, and taken away to other countries. Eh? So, and that information needs to go out to the public. The public needs to be aware of that. Eh? Um, and, and it's not just the movable objects, the, the things that you can move from museums, but also um, some of the, the artifacts you have, you know, like stone images and they take the pieces out. The people have, you know, chiseled away the pieces and then, you know, transported that across the world. And, and um, also um, paintings. Uh, um, and other artifacts so that are moved across or, or um, uh, mats uh, that, that, that are the property or the treasures. Uh, what did they say in New Zealand, the Tao, the Tao oh. mm. Yes. So the treasures that belong to the, it's a collective memory. So it's not just yes. one person that it belongs to, it's the, the memory of the people and how that um, is representative of them. And if you don't have it, you, you, how are you gonna pass it on uh, for future generations. So it's important to have the object identification and the description and the catalog number numbering and for all the museums in the Pacific. If they haven't already got it, it needs to happen, you know? So that, that's something that Pima um, can um, uh, just uh, uh, follow up and uh, um, check on the status of the ident uh, object identification and um, uh, databases, whether they're they have them and whether they're backed up because that's another another issue is having a backup server offline somewhere else you know that uh, people can refer yes and uh, i'd just like to say as, as well when i was at the Fiji museum one of the the sort of um great motivators for us was um we had a minister at the time who was very supportive and he said we need to have a a virtual museum because there are some children who are not able to get to to museums um, and even people who are overseas, the diaspora of people, who are not able to see what is in the museum. So to make a, uh, a virtual museum. So we had an, an interactive virtual museum that was developed. And in doing so, we, were, we had to have the object identification and photographs of everything. 
and the descriptions. So that, that was another way to, to sort of uh, have the impetus to, uh, to ensure that the database was updated. Huh? Though there are many thousands of artifacts, um, you know, we, we still need to have it for all the museums across the Pacific and in Fiji. Yeah. Such a, a very important day yeah, for all of us, the 14th of November. So it's a, a wonderful opportunity for you and I to be having this Talano session to inform our people. Yeah? So this is more like advocacy. Yeah? Um, yes, yes. and promoting the work of uh, of the museum so in terms of the i just love to you know the the virtual museum eh? particularly you were saying about the diaspora yeah and connecting yes, the yes, museum yes. collections overseas and connecting them to fiji because i know the fiji museum has connected with the museum of victoria in yes, australia yes. at some point there yeah? they have a virtual uh, museum imagine if we have all of that connected to the different museums around the world Yes, yeah, that, 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 would, that would be wonderful. I mean, that's why it was set up. It was really in, in the first place. It was to look at the rural the children because the museum is, uh, came out, comes under the Ministry of Education. Education mm. and for children and for rural, remote um, uh, areas, to, 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 to have them catered. But the diaspora, you can actually mm. see. Um, oh, my internet. Excuse me. Sorry, my child, my, the, phone, the phone was ringing us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's you were mentioning about mute. the rural schools, yeah? Mm. Yes, yes. Rural remote, especially those in the outer islands. You know, yeah. most of those on, on the mainland, they, they they had access to the museum when when before the, the pandemic and everything. Mm. There was always school visits. They used to come in and uh, sort of frog march them around and <laughs> to come in to look at the museum. But the yes. rural remote, they found it very hard to come in, you know, transportation. And so they're always... The, um, the cost, uh, eh? mm. Yeah, the cost. And uh, oh, get, there's a lot mm. of fundraising. And um, the boats, the boats coming over. And when are they going to come yes. over and accommodation? So, yeah. so in terms of this data, we know we are celebrating the 50 year anniversary of the convention. So the convention, the name is quite long, eh? as you can see on the screen yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, convention on the means of prohibiting and preventing the illicit import, export, and transfer of ownership of cultural property. So yes. this convention was signed in 1970. So can you share to us a little bit, how does Fiji, um, why are we talking about this today and how should Fiji and its people through the ministry be a signatory to this convention? Why is it important? Thank you, my cow. Um, first, first of all, like if you put Fiji in the context, um, like we sort of come under the the Melanesian group, huh? and um, the, the, some of the countries came together in two thousand and fifteen, uh, and uh, prepared a, a in, in Port Vila, Vanuatu. They had the museum officials come in together. Remember, remember I was saying in Fiji we started in two thousand to create awareness, and then in two thousand and fifteen they're coming together again, but in a regional <laughs> meeting. And again in Papua New Guinea in 2017, no, when was it? 14. Oh, 14. Yeah, yeah, 2014. So they keep having all these meetings. And then there was a declaration that was made um, to, to, to sort of guide the countries on, on what museums need to do. So as I was mentioning, establish inventories, develop activities, to develop awareness among the prosecutors, um, educational activities. So mm. all of these activities, um, uh, were, were um, identified and for Fiji it's important at, at the Port Villa meeting in 2015 I was actually um, coming in as the director of the museum and mm -hmm. I, I sort of came back and said hey we need to we need to pull all of the, the um, uh, police uh, Interpol the customs the museum directors anybody that's involved with the, you know the, 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 who are the custodians of the the, the, the national treasures huh? to bring them together to to have a workshop to, to try and um, uh, move forward and, and having a, 
um, this uh, convention, which uh, is a, like a soft law that guides it, it actually tells you what you need to do to protect uh, the, the artifacts uh, and, uh, and who the who the players are, who the um, uh, stakeholders are that need to be involved in this process. So it, it's a guideline for 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 um, countries to to have their um, artifacts protected. Um, uh, and it's an international um, software, so it, 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 across the the the, um, the world, everybody would follow it, and it would would also great um, bilateral relationships. So foreign affairs would also be involved, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, because if you're, uh, if somebody's stolen an artifact and it's gone to say New Zealand, then the New Zealand government and Fiji government would be uh, talking to each other to what do we need to do to get this object back? And I think you have the, a great example there from, um, uh, from uh, Iraq, from yes. uh, what happened with the, uh, the artifact there. I think you had it on your, on your screen. Yes, um, I think this was here, yeah, the Gilgamesh. I'm gonna right, share it on right. the screen. The yeah. tablet from Iraq, eh? yes. So in yeah. times of war or, or when there's looting, mm -hmm. and that, that's also something that Blue Shield, Blue Shield International that- um, It uh, is. The, oh, there it is. Um, the, 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 um, the Gilgamesh uh, tablet um, is 3,500 years old and it, uh, 3,500 years old. And so the, the, the UNESCO is celebrating the fact that he got re, re, repatriated or back to the country uh, of, of its origin. And so somebody had stolen it and it, it took a couple of years um, mm. uh, before, what was it, in 1991? 1991, yeah, there was yeah. the war, eh? the yeah, war in so Iraq. There was a war, so everybody, uh, uh, everybody, you know, comes in. And one of the things that, so where Blue Shield comes in is for the training of the military officers. So when there is a war that you should observe, if you see this blue, uh, the blue shield symbol, that you should not touch or move any of those um, objects. So in 1991, somebody did steal uh, something that is precious to the people um, and uh, it went uh, missing. And then in 2007, it resurfaced. And uh, you know, that, that I mean, that's a long time from 1991 to 2007 mm. for it to disappear and then suddenly, oh, huh, it's in somebody's shoebox, but you know, um, it, it resurfaced, and and this is something that is a uh, um, significant to the people mm. of Iraq. And then he said, "Hold on, this belongs to us." It's yes. a, and some people say, "Oh, it's only an object, but it's the memory, the living memory of uh, of the people and uh, their record." So um, they wanted it to to um, to be repatriated. Mm. So um, I think it was in 2019, was it now that uh, the, the the Justice Department came yes, to the US? Yeah. 2019, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we managed to uh, repatriate it back to the original owners. So, mm. But a very, interesting point, a very interesting point there, Tau. Yeah? The only reason why it was repatriated back, because Iraq and the US are signatories to this convention, right? Exactly, yeah. So that's that's the, the bilateral um, uh, you know arrangements. Huh? So it, what you have a government to government arrangement. If you take from my country, then you you are you know required anything that doesn't belong to you must give it back. So in, in simple terms. Huh? So um, uh, yes, that that that's a great uh, that arrangement between the two countries. Because huh? you mm -hmm. can also do museum to museum, but when it's um you know something of of national na national and even um, for world significance, huh? mm -hmm. uh, then it, that's where the uh, countries will. Uh, come in in uh, foreign affairs um, through this this uh, soft law for um, uh, the conventions. Huh? Many conventions, so this is uh, one that looks particularly at uh, illicit trafficking, huh? cultural. Mm -hmm. The one for the, uh, I, I think you mentioned yesterday about the, the, like the iguanas and all of, of that, yeah. that's, for, that's under CITES, so that's a different convention, mm -hmm. which is a um, uh, convention of illicit trafficking of uh, endangered species. Eh? Yes, so that's because they were trying to, they were trying to steal the parrots from Kandavu. Yes, it must be, they're very talkative, they're very talkative. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but it's a different convention. <laughs> that's illicit uh, trafficking for species. Eh? Mm. Uh, so that, that, that you would have all your Department of Environment involved there. Ah. Eh? But this one, you would have the museums, and uh, the ministries for culture or departments of heritage involved in in, in this particular, mm. with all of the other stakeholders, foreign affairs, and uh, uh, later on.
uh, right. the customs and the Interpol. Mm. Yeah. And now you were mentioning that, uh, you know, last year, 2020, we are celebrating the 50 years anniversary of this convention, eh? the 1970 uh, convention. convention. And then you were saying that 21 out of 46 yes. nations are the ones that are si they've signed it. Would you like to share a little bit about it and how does yeah. it involve the Pacific or Fiji? Okay, from the, 20, from the 21 out of 46, that is from the Asia Pacific region. Eh? So we come under, under UNESCO, we come under like a block for Asia and the Pacific. We sometimes say we, we are the small P and, and Asia is huge compared to the mm. Pacific you know, a third of the world and we're in an ocean, um, mm. so large ocean states. But from all of the, the, tw the 46 states, 21 in Asia, uh, um, there's none from the Pacific. No, after all this time, it's 50 years. And then as I mentioned in, in 2000, we, we started in Fiji. And all this time, we've never um, uh, ratified or ceded to this convention. And it is because of the process, uh, the, the, the mm. process that, to be involved, P human resources. You need to have people who are the champions of this um, convention, uh, who are around. People change, directors change, staff change. But you know, we, we need to relook at. Like I said, this is another one of those problem solving uh, things that we need to do. Um, and as mentioned in 2015, we have the Port Villa Declaration mm. that was made in uh, Vanuatu, right. which gave um, uh, you, you know recommended that the, you have a network of museums. So we have Pima. Um, for customs and policing to come together and collaborate and the, all of the things that they need to do to establish inventories and uh, develop capacity building for museum directors mm. and, uh, and all of the uh, customs and police uh, mm. and awareness raising. So we're doing awareness raising today yeah. but, um, and, and also to develop education um, activities to promote this. Um, it, it's not just the artifacts, it's the, the art forms, the paintings. Yeah? The, 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 sometimes they're they're stolen from um, art galleries. So it's, uh, it's also not just museums, it's art galleries or, or, or works from uh, in libraries, you know, like uh, mm. manuscripts that may be of important. And, and if they're stolen and taken mm. out to another country, well, that's where Interpol and the customs come in. Mm. And so all of these people need to be aware of, you know, why it's a crime or, you know, or, or, or what kind of crime this is and what do mm. we need to do to, to, to raise awareness on the problem and then try and resolve and bring mm. the, the, uh, the artifact or the, the painting or the, um, the piece of you know, fossil or whatever has been mm. taken, return it back to the country of origin. Yeah. So in that case now, if the training is involved, for example, like the picture we're looking at, eh? this guy holding the tablet, the Gilgamesh tablet. So if it comes through the airport, and someone mm -hmm. notices it, maybe it was scanned and it's in somebody's suitcase. If yes, the custom yes. officer is not trained, they yeah. just think it's just a piece of rock, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a nice piece of rock. But then it also goes back to where did this rock come? Did you have a, do you have a permit to bring this in? in uh, you know, how did you get it? And, and as you mentioned, yeah, the, the permits. So when, when researchers come into the country, um, you should, there should be a system within the country. That's also something that people need to look at. Is what is the system for um, permits to 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 research? Um, as was mentioned yesterday, instead you just can't go into a Fiji, I mean, a village, say in Fiji. You just can't go straight in uh, as a tourist and say, "Oh, tell me all the stories about what happened with the Lapita pottery." And uh, um, uh, oh, and you just share it with us, and we'll, you know, that's the, one. It's the intellectual property, but it's the knowledge from the people. And do, 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 before the, the researchers go in, do they have? Um, uh, uh, a permit to say yes from the Ministry of Education or wherever that they are allowed to, to collect the knowledge and take the knowledge away from the, the communities. Uh, the community is, oh, you take it, you do what you like with it, it it's fine, you know. Well, that because we're so giving, but not realizing that, you know, that, that um, it, it could also you know, create damage. And, and the same with the artifact. Where did you get the artifact from? Um, did you get permission from the, the people that you got it from? Um, you know, and also carbon dating. How, how, you know, all of these things that come into uh, into play. Yeah? So the, the research permits is something that all of the, the, the museums and the public needs to be uh, aware of. Uh, that uh, you go in uh, to do uh, research or take information from a community or, or from an educational in, uh, institute or the public, you need mm -hmm. to have a, a, some kind of permit to say that you're authorized to mm -hmm. take that information.
and, and um, if it goes out of the country, it may be required to to, to do a report within right. a certain time. Sometimes people they take the the uh, the information or, or the artifact, um, and um, they don't produce the report. Or so mm. years later, people say, "Hey, you remember that person that did a report? I've got it on our database that they, oh, they took mean. the this information." But does anybody? Mm. Oh no, everybody's left by then, and they can't even remember who mm. you know looking after the yeah, case. Sarana, yeah. Yeah. So in that case, Tau, Ken Balmbal, if uh, we do some workshops in Fiji, uh, yes. you know, to involve the police, the customs, the museum people, uh, the Navy, uh, yeah. I was also thinking maybe we should involve the Provincial Council and the Turangani yes. Koro. Yeah, the Turangani yes, Koro, yeah. they have to be yeah. alert. Yes, yeah. And, and like I said, and, and these days, you know, it's always a problem, and especially because we've had this pandemic that, you know, people are going to the Zoom platform. So now you can have a much bigger, you know, scope, and the public coming in to yeah. hear about this and, and, and get all of the, the stakeholders, all of the, the participants yeah. who are involved in this to know about um, the, this, this problem yeah. and what should be done or who, who should be doing what. And then yeah. once you've got that awareness, it's like trying to establish a, a, a task force Mm. And it doesn't need to be the government ministries because the government ministries are speaking for they're also busy doing so many things and and some of the NGOs are, are busy doing whatever they need to do. So that's we invite the public in who have knowledge and skills that want to, to be a part of this to you know sometimes it's writing up um uh, uh briefs on, on what the situation is or, or organizing the workshops or organizing the people to come together. You know, it's um uh, mm. there's ways to to, to things now use this platform and yeah. as i was saying i just had a great experience with the, the visual association the vt yeah. association of visual artists that i'm involved in fiji we, yeah. we set up we, we got the constitution that we could never meet but once we had the uh, uh, some uh, assistance with ilo and um, unesco to get us to meet together on the zoom platform boy we we just ran with it uh, we just ran with the an online art exhibition and made loads of sales. So lots of happy artists who, you know, have been suffering because they can't get to exhibit their work. There's no art, National Art Gallery. Mm. And they, they, we were able to make sales. They, they made the sales and there was no commissions or anything, which is like direct on the artist. Mm. But using the, the Zoom platform to communicate and Facebook to make the, the um, mm. uh, yeah, the various, uh, uh, in, uh, email and uh, sorry mm. electronic media and social media to, yeah, to solve some of the problems so i would say what the problem like in this case is we wanted to do this we had a national action plan we wanted to have the workshop it didn't happen we go to the, the ministry responsible that has the funds no sorry we haven't got any funds we can't do it. but now you can use the, the zoom platform you don't have to just pull everybody to, together as long as people have internet and the um the email works it's you know the meeting of minds so you know just change the way we do things you don't have to get them all in a in a um in a room and fly people from all over the place or get them coming in the uh the mm. canoes or whatever it's mm. just use the, the platform and mm. uh, bring all the minds together get a a, a working committee or a, a a task force that is not necessarily uh, relying on the government which is because they're overworked and uh, so mm. many so many conventions to look after and uh, mm. but there are people you know who, who would volunteer their time to to you know help to to get the, the, you know whatever um say in the port villa declaration to to implement mm. what it, it's it says it yeah, the, the countries need to do mm. and uh, move from there yeah. and i can um mention something there because there's a lot of people who are retired you know retired teachers yes. Um, yeah. some retired policemen, police uh, women too, that we can right. tap into. That is really yeah. awesome. What a wonderful idea, Tao. Mm. Yeah, their, exper their experience, their, their, their knowledge of the networks. Eh? It's there, mm. but uh, you know, we, we're not oh. tapping on it because we keep putting it back into the, like I said, the silo effect where you just keep yes. going, the same problem. And it's like 50 years since the convention has been signed, yeah. none in the no. Pacific, because we keep looking at it in the same way. We need to change and we can use the platform use all the experience exp expertise you were saying you know like uh, all the retired people uh, with, the, with the experience and knowledge of mm. all of these networks um to bring them together and do you know really good experience and yes. having you know their research uh, majors 
in this field because we don't have it for the Pacific, we don't have it for Fiji. Mm -hmm. You know, experts who are um, who are uh, focused on this this problem, mm -hmm. and we, we, because we need to, to have it. Yeah? After all this, man, I'm so excited now. I know yeah. you said it's, you know, 50 years, but, uh, you know, it's never too late. Never too late. Yes. Uh, 50 we, time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we can do it yeah. now. I'm happy yes. to host, uh, you know, many of our museums and our experts or our task force. I really like the word task force, you yes. know, to host them on my platform and, and encourage them as well, like in the different day sana. Yeah, yes. one from Ra, one from Ba, and maybe in a star where they can have a task force there just to make sure make up when you put a code in on Ramaika, say cow, say yaw, naimbe. Because some yeah. people might come in as tourists, because that's what happened for the Radini Way Morota, eh? Yes, he was yes, posing yes. as a tourist. Yes, yeah, 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 right? Get across, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, Margaret, yeah, ladies smuggling. and gentlemen, the artifact that the uh, Taun Dimere is talking about, it's um, to do with a, a carved uh, ivory goddess. Eh? Mm, yeah. Yeah. And I think it was said that it was the only one eh, in Fiji, Yes, the only yeah, remaining yeah. one in Fiji. And it was uh, taken out by this man who came in posing as a tourist and uh, went over to, um, there was in Nantakuni village, eh, Nui Maro, uh, yes, in yes. Etnasir. Eh? And so that's a big lesson for us to learn uh, from um, for this not to happen in any parts of Fiji. So, well, that's what Tao is saying. Ask questions. If there, anyone comes to the village, don't give information willy nilly. Ask for the permit. Yes, yeah, ask for the permit. I, th I think it's the same when we have the cultural mapping in Fiji. <laughs> and they say, um, they say, you're not allowed to take the information. Why? Who said so? Because uh, you really said so. <laughs> you're not allowed to take it. But it's really you're protecting yourselves, you know, and and get the community involved, you know, to say no, no, you, you really need to look at this or, or refer to the the Fiji Museum. Eh? In this case, if it's an artifact that's been stolen, uh, or the Arts mm. Council if it's a uh, a painting uh, mm. or an art gallery. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so. As I said, these are some of our national treasures eh? yes. that uh, we should hold on to, and some are, some are at national level and some are at the local community level. Eh? So. Right. I like the word you're saying, Tao, the collective memory. That's really nice. Yes, yeah. yeah. yeah I like that because it's it's not just an artifact that belongs to one family, but it's a tribal yeah, affiliation that uh, in, um, belongs to a group of people. Yes, yeah. It could be a province. It could be, you know, oh, the, uh, yeah. but it's the, everybody together and, and that represents, you know, the people. So, mm, yeah. It's a so. Um, so our Tau Tavasi is inviting us to come and have a cup of hot chocolate. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> Naka Tau Vasiti, uh, we'll just and have a hot well. chocolate. <laughs> Naka, does it have marshmallows? I just wanted to know, because we have marshmallows in Kandam. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody, for listening in and uh, uh, being engaged with our guest today. Andi Meretui Tubo Ratunumbumbua. We're so glad that she can take her time uh, away from a busy schedule just to talk to us and inform us about the roles that uh, she has been doing and working on for so many years. But this is just one of the little uh, you know, just from uh, the tip of the iceberg of what she's talking about uh, uh, today. Yeah, it's related to this very special day uh, that we're sharing on this uh, uh, on this website here, the UNESCO, um, the special day, yeah? uh, 2000, um, 1970 convention. 1970 yeah? convention, yeah. Right. There, yeah, there yes. is another one, the 1995 one, it says like a sister convention. Yeah? Oh. on stolen or illegal exported cultural objects. Eh? But right. This is the, the main one. Eh? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So for those of hand. you who are looking at our screen, yeah, you can go online, go to UNESCO, and uh, it talks about this uh, very special day, the November 14th um, event eh? that talks about NGO, the International Day Against Illicit Trafficking in Cultural Property. Eh? So you can go online, um, search about it, and then uh, I will invite Tau Mere again um, sometimes in the future to you know talk a little bit more 
about this. So tell me, what's after this? What what would be your suggestion uh, to us? You've mentioned a few. Um, mm -hmm. Any small steps that we can do before the end of the year or maybe to kickstart 2022? Okay, well, well first is if, if, if um, people are interested, have a look at the Port Villa declaration uh, that was done in 2015 as a baseline document uh, because it has the recommendations for what um, uh, these networks, the networks for the museums, the customs and the police, uh, police services, etc. And that collaboration, have a look at that first. And from there, you'll get an idea of uh, um, how we need to proceed. And in the case of Pima, if uh, Pima is the, um, the body, the regional body uh, that advocates for museums in the Pacific under the International Council of Museums, if, if, um, and this was mentioned at the 50th anniversary in on, uh, for Asia Pacific, that Pima be the, the the body that will coordinate the activities. So to have, uh, like, if you have it start in Fiji with a, a national workshop. Or it could be a regional one again to get everybody on, on board, um, the, the museum directors uh, across the region first, and to say that this is what we're going to do, then uh, and to the national ones. Eh? With, uh, but you, you know we need to have the, the customs, the police services, and, the, and, and as you know, as those members of the public that would be interested in in helping to move for their mm. countries the, the, the convention. Eh? There's a, you, you need lawyers as well, eh? people who are in the, the legal people that um, be in the uh, like, Solicitor General's offices and that. Because eh? it has to be a, a, a legally recognized uh, mm. instrument. Eh? Um, and, and going through the ratification of the uh, conventions I've, have had been experienced in a, a couple in Fiji and it's a long process, but it's a long process because we're relying on you know government departments to do it whereas if you get the task force into do all the groundwork and uh, make the awareness it, it should move fast it should move faster especially using the the, the zoom platform eh, for yes. meetings you don't need to yes. physically move meet uh, as mm. we used to it's a horrible mm. thing to say but that's you know the, that's the benefit of having the, the zoom platform eh? yes. help get things move along. Yes. yes get them together move it along mm. eh? yeah mm. Uh, wow, man, we're not going to be able to really appreciate it. And I know uh, the another very interesting topic that uh, Tauba City uh, is highlighting is intellectual property right. Maybe uh, yes. I can schedule I can schedule another forum maybe yes. before the end of the year uh, to yes. talk about it because that's another you know interesting yeah. topic. So Tauba City Ritoba, I'll take note of your questions and I will definitely organize uh, a Fiji uh, intellectual property discussion uh, and forum. Uh, I will invite uh, uh, de Mere back again, and maybe Dr. Francis Koya. Um, maybe Peter, few... Peter, 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 Peter Numbalabu. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. a, yes. Yeah. 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 Right. He's so very good. Oh, there you go. So I will uh, call them in because there's so many issues uh, involving, you know, artwork and designs and things like that that needs to. Uh, be discussed and uh, for people to learn of and also for artists yeah uh, not to be taken advantage of they need to be paid yes. according to the right amount uh, they, they need to be paid for their intellectual property and recognition should also go to that individual or to a group of people yeah? if they make a, a certain yes. massy or they weave a certain mat uh, they need to or even the fan at the moment everybody has a beautiful fan from Daku yeah, so that fan yes, is, yes, is, yes. is part of the you know UNESCO intangible cultural heritage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. You've been back level. So Tao, before you finish, any uh hellos or word of advice to anybody that is listening in? I know you've got some friends listening in from England, uh level from yes. America. Tao over to you. Just do your way. And if you can uh, say something beautiful <laughs> to them, with that. Thank you, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to 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 highlight and profile this fight against illicit trafficking in cultural property. It's a celebration, the 14th of November each year, and a special shout out to Dr. Akatsuki Takahashi, who was our regional um, uh, advisor in Samoa for years. She just helped us so much in the Pacific, and uh, um, that we miss her. We know she's she's looking at us from the. Uh, from the, the Cairo, so yeah. And also for Tao, 
uh, uh, for my um, Thai varsity retriever who was trying to get me to press the right button, but we couldn't find it on the <laughs> computer, so we're back to Zoom. But thank you, thank you so much for um, your assistance, my <laughs> my Thai. <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah, and everybody else that, that's come on online, um, thank you. Uh, and we just want to more awareness and to try and we have a target to try and get the front bench and ratified um, and get that working group uh, or the uh, task force uh, mm. uh, made. That would be a, a wonderful uh, way forward mm. for, for 2000 to start in, well, we're already in November. So for 2022 mm. to start the, the uh, the engagements, the the, the talent or mm. sessions, the, the the way forward. How are we going to move yeah. this so that we get it back to fight? Yes, uh, and a special shout, shout out to your grandchildren. Uh, oh, they all send bullet to you. Oh, <laughs> Annabella and uh, boy, that's a <laughs> my little Raya and Daniela. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> Daddy. Bele. Yeah, Bele, they all say hi to you. Bullet to Thai and uh, Bele saying hi, mommy. There you go. Anyway, I mean, they're all in Suwa and I'm in Nandi. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. uh, man. Well, uh, uh, thank we you really so appreciate much. your time and we look forward to visit your farm when we come back. Yes, yes, you must come over. <laughs> in the airport. In Naka. In Naka. I think at the, the time being. <laughs> Yay. Thank you, everybody. Naka. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. In Naka. Yes. So to those of you who are listening in today, what a wonderful Talano session I had with Town Di Mere. Uh, and the Meritui to Wauratunambuambua, a beautiful lady from uh, uh, Wunamoli in Nandi. And we're just so happy that she can spare some time with us to provide some um, uh, awareness to this very special day, November the 14th, International Day Against Illicit Trafficking in Cultural Property. She does a lot of work uh, for Blue Shield. She's done a lot of work for PIMA, Pacific Island Museum Association. And Tau is just so grateful that you can be here with us today. And we look forward to 2022 uh, when we can be able to deliver a lot of these workshops to empower our people in the region. Nakavale Tau, Mother Manda. Mother Manda. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Thank we'll you. see you again. Take care, everyone. Mother Tau Vasiti, Lola Mutu Yombilo. Chocolate. Tai, Tai. Mother Tai. Mother. Okay. Mother. <laughs>